video series based on guide to equity research in the first episode we're going to be talking about management analysis and we are starting with this because if you ask me what is that one section in equity research report which gets the least attention from an analyst i would say that is management analysis in fact in most cases management analysis turns out to be merely a management bio and i'm going to stick my neck out now and say that in most cases analysts don't even work on this they simply delegate it to a junior associate who pretty much treats it like a templatized task so if you look at a typical management bio this is how it would look like it would talk about who's the ceo how long have they been ceo in the company what did they do in the past and what is their qualification you're going to have a very similar template for the cfo and coo and if you look at it it typically focuses only on the c level officers now what is my problem with this my problem is what does it mean to me as an investor i mean how does it matter to me whether the cfo was a chartered accountant or is an mba how does it matter whether the ceo went to wharton or went to columbia at the end of the day they are all qualified they all have a lot of experience what does it mean to me as an investor and what does it mean to me about my investment decision that's what we're going to talk about in this episode so let's get started first let's talk about you know what does it matter to us i mean what does an investor look for in a management it's going to be two things one is competency and another one is trustworthiness in other words integrity but how do i comment on this i would say it is in fact audacious for an equity analyst with barely any experience in top management to even think that they can comment on the competency of a top leader in a company then what do we do and even if the equity analyst has this experience do you think one equity analyst is capable enough of judging the competency of many people in the management with different coming from different domain with different skill sets i don't think so and the same goes with integrity as well at the end of the day if anybody has any data to show that a person lacks integrity then that person wouldn't have already made it to the ceo's role so no company would have promoted them if they had a checkered past no company would have made them into a ceo and without any data how do i comment on the integrity of a ceo or anybody in the senior management how do i do that both are challenging so does that mean that we have to go back to the management bio where we talk about plainly the qualification and experience and make no comment beyond that not necessary there is a middle ground which is about approaching this all in an objective manner and looking at objective parameter and that's what i'm going to talk to you about today let's look at the competency factor Now what I would say is, when you're looking at competency, rather than looking at whether an individual is competent or not, I would look at whether the organization has the necessary competence that it needs. So I'm going to look at it in two parts. What are the competency it needs, and what are the competency it has? If need be, break it by departments. Look at the competency for CEO's office, for the finance department, for the marketing department, R&D, strategy. Break it. Break it by department if need be. but for each department we are then going to see what is the competency that they need and what is the competency that they have how do we figure out what is the competency that they need this can be figured out by looking at the challenges that the company faces or the action plan and strategy that the company has for example if a company is looking at restructuring as a way to improve their margins if they have told you that you know they are planning to focus on restructuring their business to improve the margins then we all would agree that it's good to have somebody in the management who has prior experience in successfully executing restructuring operations wouldn't you agree similarly if a company says that their strategy is to focus on inorganic growth then wouldn't it be good to have somebody in the business or somebody in the management who has significant experience in mergers and acquisitions and in taking care of integrating various acquisitions right so by looking at the problems and challenges and the company strategy and action plan we can figure out what the competency it needs purely on objective parameters we are not applying any of the judgment here 
company says that they want to do something and we're going to say okay if you want to do something then we need somebody with that experience so once you look at what is the competency that's required for a given role then we look at what is the competency they have now how do we focus on this what we're going to look at is the qualification and experience at the end of the day you judge a competency based on qualification and experience one thing i would say here is that however that you got to be careful that you know you just don't look at the top leader in the uh, business alone for example when a company needs to raise money and let's say the cfo has no experience in capital raising but there is a vp finance or there is a general manager finance who has a lot of experience that's good enough isn't it so we're going to look at what the person looks that we are there the top management what is their experience and what is their qualification now if you're a senior manager qualification carries much lesser weightage and experience carries a lot more weightage isn't it so we want to focus on experience but if the manager is an unknown quantity they have very recently climbed up the corporate ladder then we can't really talk much about their experience in that case looking at their qualification will give us some basic comfort so that is why looking at qualification may be relevant at some times now let's focus on experience how do we look at experience how do we assess experience i would again break it into two parts look at experience in two categories relevance of an experience and quality of an experience relevance here means whether whatever they have done in the past is it relevant to what is expected of them now quality means how did they do the task now quality is pretty risky uh, and also pretty challenging let's first focus on the relevance aspect how do you look at relevance for example let us say here i have a company that's burning cash heavily and on the other hand i've got a new cfo who has earlier worked in all cash rich companies let's say this person has never worked in a loss making or a struggling enterprise has always worked in cash rich companies now i would say this is a situation where the prior experience is of less relevance we are not saying that the person is incapable of handling the challenge but we are simply saying that you know their past experience is not relevant which means there is a little bit of chance or there is a risk that this person may not be able to handle the expectations of the role we are not saying that they cannot but we are saying there is a risk all right so that is how we can look at relevance now coming to quality i already told you quality is pretty risky quality judging quality of experience how well somebody did is pretty risky pretty challenging most of the time you are not going to get the data but then if you have to comment on quality what can you do if the person has already been in a senior role for a long time and you have the past track record of their performance let's say if they have served in the same company for last 10 years and you have certain key parameters that you can track then you can comment based on that how did the performance has been when this person has been on the helm of affairs at least within their department even if they have worked in another company as long as you have data that can show us how this person how the company performed under this person's leadership we can make an assessment of that but again that's not going to be available always in that case what do we do we can still look at where did the person work and how did the company did overall not necessarily in their department not necessarily the task assigned to that person but as a overall how did the company perform it's not going to give us a direct understanding of this person but gives us a broad picture at least right so that is what we can do to judge the quality of a performance so you may now be wondering what is the point in doing all these things because eventually you come back to the same qualification and experience so how does this entire approach change what is the change at the end of the day the difference is this now we have mapped the competency that they have with the competency that they need now this was missing earlier now with this i with this competency mapping i can give certain insights to the investor for example let us look at this mock case study so let us say there is a company uh, this company has very mature product lines and what they have done is they have decided to shut down or rather they have decided to restructure these mature product lines and they want to enter into a new business focused on new technology and let's say they have recruited somebody to handle the new technology somebody with extensive experience but when we looked at the management let's say we realize that nobody has past experience in restructuring 
So they want to restructure their business, get into new technology. They have management or they have somebody to handle the new technology, but nobody for restructuring. So how would I write my key takeaway? This is how it's going to look like. So I'm going to keep it very objective. So we're going to say, no, experience management, but no track record in restructuring. That's all. We are not saying that they're going to mess up restructuring. They're simply saying that they have no track record. So I may have a small write-up, something like this. I may say, you know, this company's strategy is to get into restructure their existing business and get into new technology. They have recruited Ms. Jane Smith, who has prior experience in this new technology. So she must be able to handle this. However, as far as restructuring is concerned, they have nobody with prior experience. So that's a blind spot for us. That's how I'm going to give as my key takeaway. Now for an investor, what does it mean? Very simply this, that the management is giving you some guidance on margins. They are relying on restructuring. But my assessment says that nobody has experience in restructuring, which means there is a possibility that this may not work out. So at least I'm going to consider an alternative scenario in addition to the management guidance. Management is just telling you that margins would improve. I'm going to assume that what if they mess up incur huge restructuring cost and still have no improvement in margins. I'm going to consider that alternative scenario. And so that I can present a picture that can tell the investor about the risk involved in investing in this business. Now below this key takeaway, you can talk about a typical management bio as well. For me, a management bio actually goes in the appendix section. But even if you were to include, you can include it right below this takeaway. But even when you include a normal management bio, I would insist that let us not write it as a plain bio. Let's make, bring out what it means to the investor. So for example, if I'm going to write a profile of this Miss Jane Smith, this is what I'm, it may look like. We're going to say, you know, Miss Jane Smith is the new head of BP and she's been appointed on so-and-so date. She has so many years of experience, let's say 20 years of experience, of which last five years has been in a senior role, in which the company has claimed that she has worked or she managed to serve more than 100 clients. None of this is our opinion. We are merely stating the facts as facts. But what is the takeaway from here? What does it mean for the investor? So we're going to say, with her experience, we believe that she can help the company set up this new vertical. That is all. And we are again not saying she is good, she is bad. We are just saying, okay, she has the necessary experience to set up this vertical. Sometimes when you're writing a bio, there could be some profile where nothing comes out as a key takeaway. For example, let's look at, let's say the company has a CFO called Abhishek Anand. And let's say Abhishek Anand has been a CFO for eight years and there's nothing uh, specific to talk about. So how would it look like? This is how, am I right? I may, say, I may say Mr. Abhishek Anand has been a CFO for over eight years with the company and for the last eight years, they haven't faced any major challenges in finance and they have maintained proper publishing of financial statements and financial reporting has been maintained with proper timelines without any adverse audit opinion. So what does it mean for the investor? They are going to say, if we do not foresee, let's say for example, we do not foresee any major financial challenges in the near future, what we try to tell the investor is, so don't worry, there is, it's going to be status quo, there is nothing that's going to be Great here, there is nothing going, that's going to be problematic here. This one is going to be status quo. So all that we're going to say is, we do not expect any major challenge in the near future so that the operation should continue to run smooth as it has been running in the past. So whenever you write or whatever you write, keep in mind that it has to tie up to your investment recommendation. Uh, this is a made up case study and therefore the write up is also based on a made up case study. Now I'm sure a lot of you here would be wanting me to write or give you an example of a real life case study. I promise I will do that, but not today. Why? Because the kind of management analysis that I talked about or I took you through requires a holistic approach. You have to first understand the business. You have to understand the industry. Look at what kind of challenges exist in the industry. Look at what kind of strategy the company is coming up with to cope up with the challenges. And then see what is the competency that's required to execute the strategy and what is the competency that they have. So this is not something you can do in silo. It requires a holistic approach. Over the next several days, or uh, at least over the next several months actually, I'll be coming up with various videos focusing on different aspects of equity research 
and as you go and complete various aspects, we will definitely pick up a real life company and we'll do a proper equity research focusing on all of them. So even in this video, we only focus on competency part. We really now have not focused on integrity. Now, actually, we don't focus on integrity of anybody. I mean, who are we to comment on somebody's integrity? Uh, that is very difficult. Rather, what we should be doing is focus on the governance structure of a company to check whether they have necessary systems in place to ensure that the management acts in the best interest of shareholders. As long as the governance structure is there, as long as they have necessary incentive plans, then we should be comfortable with that. So with that message, I'll end this video. We'll definitely have a separate video where we talk about governance. We'll in fact have a video focusing on the ESG component. But I hope you found this video useful and I'll meet you next time with another video. And until then, see you and take care.